It's easy to understand why Impressionist painters were drawn to Nice. The second largest French city on the Mediterranean coast is situated at the foot of the French Alps on the French Riviera, on France's southeast coast where the Mediterranean Sea connects. And if that doesn't already sound like heaven, I don't know what does. The 19th century houses on Nice's promenades and boulevards, the city's Italiante old district, and the rugged natural terrain that offers innumerable breathtaking vantage points are all sources of the city's attractiveness. Welcome to Primo Traveler. Delightful discoveries await. Before we show you our top picks, please consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to activate the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos. Without any further ado, here are today's top 10 picks. Number 10. Place Garibaldi and Les Petites Marais. Now you guys might remember my French isn't the best, but we're gonna dive right in. The Place Garibaldi is one of Nice's biggest squares and is only a short stroll from the Musée d'Art Moderne et d'Art Contemporain. The late 18th century designed plaza, which is surrounded by imposing Baroque structures, today has a modern metropolitan atmosphere as it sits at the intersection of four heavily used roads and is traversed also by a tram line. So lots of transportation. A statue of the well-known Nice resident and Italian liberation warrior Garibaldi graces the square. Les Petites Marais, one of Nice's hottest new districts, is located between Place Garibaldi and the port. The restaurants and nightlife in this lovely neighborhood are well known. The Place Dupin, the center of the restaurant district of Les Petites Marais, is a bustling gathering place. The Rue Bonaparte is close by and is teeming with great fast food joints, cafes, pastry shops, specialized supermarkets, and gourmet food suppliers. The French know their food, so you really can't go wrong here. Number 9. Hardin Albert, One Air. This lush park is a well-liked location for relaxing and leisurely strolls thanks to its shady trees, wide lawns, fountains, and scented roses. The park is especially beloved by families with young children because of its playgrounds and vintage carousel. The Théâtre de Verdure, a charming outdoor theater, is located in the Hardin Albert One Air and is encircled by palm and pine trees. It's beautiful. This outdoor facility hosts music events during the spring and summer, including rock festivals and appearances by well-known rock bands. The garden is located between the Avenue de Verdun and the Promenade des Anglais. The busy Avenue Jean Médicine, one of Nice's main retail avenues, is only a short stroll from the garden. Number 8. Musée Matisse The Musée Matisse, which is perched on the hill of Simiez, is a must-visit destination for art enthusiasts. This charming museum is housed in a magnificent Italiante garden that surrounds a former Genoese palace. A wide range of Matisse's paintings is represented in the permanent collection. There are also intriguing designs for the decorations of the chapel in Vence, along with 31 paintings and 57 sculptures. Almost all of Matisse's sculptures to date. So Matisse fans, you don't want to miss this. The complete body of work offers a comprehensive glimpse of the artist's creative process and brilliance. Temporary exhibits, cultural activities, and art workshops are also held in the museum. The beautiful setting of the museum is another attraction. There are also gardens and an olive grove on the property. Number 7. Musée des Beaux Arts The Musée des Beaux Arts, located in the Les Bons area of Montreal, houses a sizable collection of works from the 16th to the 20th centuries. In the previously private residence, Elizaveta Vasilevna Kochube, a Russian princess, whose name I apparently have a hard time pronouncing, constructed the Musée des Beaux Arts de Nice in 1878. Named for the artist Jules Charest, who lived and worked in Nice during his final years, the museum opened as the Palais des Arts Jules Charest on January 7th, 1928. So it's about 100 years older than AirPods. Not bad. A collection of artwork from the previous four centuries is kept in the museum. 
These include paintings by Charest and other French Riviera-based artists, including Alexis Mossa and his son Gustave Adolphe Mossa, who served as the museum's curators for a long time. The Little Museum houses ceramic works by Pablo Picasso, in addition to sculptures by Jean-Baptiste Carpeau, François Roud, Michel de Tarasky, and Auguste Roudin. Number 6. Monastery Notre-Dame des Semiers The Monastery Notre-Dame des Semiers is perched above the ancient Seminellan ruins in the Chic Semiers district, close to the Matisse Museum. Roman baths and an amphitheater are still visible beneath the monastery. The monastery, which was founded by the Benedictines in the beginning, was taken over by the Franciscans in the 16th century, and it was also expanded in the 17th. Its restoration, done in 1850 using neo-Gothic designs, is what gives it its current aspect. A museum chronicling the history of the neighborhood's Franciscan monks since the 13th century is located inside the Simiez Monastery, which is now recognized as a historical monument. The museum also houses a collection of religious artwork and frescoes. Three works of art by the renowned Italian painter Louis Brea are shown in the monastery's 15th century church. The lavish grounds of the monastery, which are manicured with Mediterranean trees and a rose garden, stunning, are lovely for visitors to stroll through. Views of the town and the sea can be seen in great detail from vantage points throughout the garden. And trust me, you don't want to miss this. Now let's move on to our top 5. Make sure you don't miss any of these. They are incredible. Number 5. Cathedral Orthodox Rus St. Nicholas the Cathedral Orthodox Rus St. Nicholas, built in 1912 by Tsar Nicholas, is regarded as one of the most stunning Orthodox cathedrals outside of Russia. To meet the religious requirements of the expanding Russian population in the city, Tsar Nicholas II, the tragic head of the Romanov family, ordered the construction of the St. Nicholas Russian Orthodox Cathedral in the early 20th century. From its location, on the appropriately named Avenue Nicholas II, the church's onion domes, vibrant colors, and intricate embellishments are difficult to miss. The interior of the cathedral, which was built in Muscovite architecture and is lavishly decorated, resembles a jewel box because of its decorative icons, paintings, and gilded iconostasis. The cathedral is still used for religious purposes. Visitors are welcome but they must abide by the following rules. Men must cover their shoulders. Women should avoid wearing small skirts and shorts, cover their shoulders and cover their heads if possible. The cathedral also offers guided tours in your choice of language, either English, French, or Japanese. Number 4. Musée National Marc Chagall Near Nice's historic district on Simiez Hill is where you'll find the Chagall Museum. The structure, which became publicly accessible in 1973, was created by French architect André Hermant, a former Auguste Perret associate, under the rigorous direction of Chagall, who resided nearby in the commune of saint paul de vence The collection's focal point pieces were provided by the artist, who also contributed directly to the design of the building's ornamental elements. This museum will excite Marc Chagall admirers with its impressive collection of artwork with biblical themes. The collection includes a huge number of paintings made by Chagall over the course of his life, as well as 12 substantial works using Old Testament illustrations. There is lovely greenery all around the museum. Olive trees, cypress trees, oaks, and Mediterranean plants are used in the natural landscaping to create the appearance of a Garden of Eden and create an appearance it does. Since Agapanthus flowers blossom in early July, just before Marc Chagall's birthday, they were planted there. A touching sentiment. Number 3. The Promenade des Anglais The Promenade des Anglais, Nice's most famous avenue, is a stunning pedestrian mall that hugs the contours of the Bay des Anglais beaches. This storied beachfront avenue is surrounded by beautiful gardens and is lined with planted palm palms. The Promenade des Anglais has a road for cars, a bicycle lane, and a sidewalk and esplanade for pedestrians alone. The Promenade des Anglais was created by Englishman Reverend Louis May in 1820. And get this, he did it at his own expense. 
because it started as a modest footpath. So not super expensive, but still. In 1931, it received two separate roadways, which significantly improved it. The Duke of Canot, the son of Queen Victoria at the time, ceremonially opened the Promenade des Anglais. The Palais de la Méditerranée Theatre and beautiful Villa Massina House, both located at 65 Rue de France, have graced the Promenade des Anglais since the Belle Époque. The Villa Massena is surrounded by gorgeous Mediterranean gardens and is home to the Musée Massena Art Collection, which features graphic arts, antiquities, and 19th century landscape paintings. Today, underground tunnels have been used to divert traffic from the roads, creating a pedestrian area where people enjoy taking strolls. Bicyclists and skateboarders also enjoy the Promenade d'Anglais' popularity. Number 2. Parc de la Colline du Château or Castle Hill Park The first part of Nice to be settled by the Greeks was on Castle Peak, a hill overlooking the Nice shoreline 2,000 years ago. The citadel, which was formerly thought to be invincible, was destroyed by French King Louis XIV's army in 1706. The land is now totally designated as a park. This lush sanctuary has a waterfall, luscious palm trees, and winding walkways that are perfect for leisurely strolls. Amazing panoramic views over the Bay d'Angue, the Vielle Ville, and the Nice Harbor are available from a number of locations. There are two cafes that have outside terraces, where you can also get food, drinks, snacks, and even ice cream. The Parc de la Colline du Château also has a playground for kids, benches, and shaded lawns perfect for picnics. The Colline du Château is accessible to guests via an escalator or Art Deco lift from Place Garibaldi or on foot from Old Town Nice. Another choice is to board the tourist train, Le Petit Train Electronique de Nice, which leaves from Quai d'Etat Unis. And man, my French, it needs a little work, so I apologize for that, but this is a lot of French. Number 1. Vielle Ville or Old Town The charming old town of Nice has a vibrant atmosphere, evocative of Italy with its labyrinth of tiny lanes and cobblestone streets. The Vielle Ville often known as Babazouk, is bordered by wide boulevards such as the Hardin Albert I, Place Massina, and Promenade du Payon. It starts at the western end of Castle Hill. In many ways, the Vieux Nice, sometimes referred to as the Old Town, is the most colorful part of the entire city. There are many small streets that can be explored for hours on end, and most of them lead to shops, fantastic restaurants, or art exhibits. The paint contains a significant amount of pastels. The villagers still hang their clothes out on long clotheslines across the street to add even more romance to the design. You truly get to see a piece of the real city here because this region used to be a very impoverished part of town, which also adds to its attractiveness. The Cathedral saint Ripart, named after the town's patron saint, and the well-known Finocchio ice cream shop are two other must-see sites. Which of our top picks would you love to explore? Let me know down in the comment section below. Also check out this other video from Primo Traveler and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of our 10 prime picks. And let Primo Traveler be your guide to premier destinations around the world.